They say the Montezuma's castle ruin was constructed between 1100 and 1300. Mom wants all the kids. Pretty neat, they could be up there and if someone attacks from this side, just pull the ladders up. There's caves all the way through here. The view of the actual inside. Yeah. Around the year 1400, people began leaving their homes here. 500 years later, its walls were still largely intact. The builders chose their home site wisely, taking advantage of the shelter that a natural alcove provided. The majority of what you see today is original, and the castle is thought to be one of the best preserved sites from the period, likely due to its inaccessibility. Hopi and other native consultants say dwellings like this were meant to recycle back to the earth after the people left. However, in 1906, the castle became a national monument to be managed for pre present and future generations. A variety of preservation treatments were applied to help withstand hundreds of thousands of visitors and keep its walls standing. Whenever possible, archaeologists attempt to match today's treatments more closely with the original materials and building details, applying the minimum necessary to protect the integrity of the structure. You see the nice level flat right here, or rooms? <laughs> it's stacking in here. Mm -hmm. There were walls all up through here. These were the people next door. Uh, They're neighbors. seven centuries ago, and receiving an invitation into this cliff-dwelling home, what you would have seen might well have been something like this cutaway model of Montezuma Castle. On the top floor, the elderly village lookout keeps his solitary vigil. His eyes search for approaching danger to those working the fields below the castle. It seems that over the ages, children and their actions change very little. On the fourth floor, you'll find a concerned mother scurrying to reach her adventuresome son, precariously balanced on the edge of the roof. On the third floor, an aging man leads his blind wife across the balcony. You'll also meet women busily preparing food, getting supplies from storerooms, making pottery and grinding corn. Usually women ground the corn, their staple food, only in small as needed quantities and prepared it in various ways. Weavers use the second floor loom to weave cotton breech cloths, bags and blankets. Today, you can see examples of their varied weaving patterns in the visitor center. Villagers use the wooden ladders as stairways to carry up provisions from fields and water from Beaver Creek. On the ledge at the base of the central tower-like section, a man prepares to start a fire using a friction drill. Nearby, a young woman awaits the returning hunters who bring wild game as variety to the village diet. We encourage you to think beyond ancient stone walls and vacant rooms to the remains of a once vibrant village, a village of people who experienced wants and needs, anxieties and fears, joys and sorrows, just as you and I today. Yeah.
he's got a real good one. How do you know? Huh? How do you know? Because I can see it from back here. Well, guys, we'll head into the visitor center and look at uh, some artifacts that have been found here. Very fascinating. Here's one last look through the trees here. A beautiful structure. This is like my fourth or fifth visit out here. I usually come here at least once a year. Very nice. 